I want to say something though about Catholic action because it's obviously a great mystery to most people who are now about and had no experience of what Catholic action was. So just a few points. <clears throat> Catholic action organisations were organisations of lay people unlike all other organisations of lay people in the church. Catholic action was special because the bishops co-opted the laity into what we called their spiritual mission. We became sharers in the apostolate of the hierarchy. We were responsible to them, the bishops. We could only operate under a mandate which they granted us. They were responsible for forming us in the mind of the church. Put it this way, we were the agents of the bishops in the world. Catholic Action organisations were thus intimately linked to the church with a bishop as their chair. Catholic Action was based on individuals acting in their lives, in the social, economic and political field. But here's the critical thing. Individuals arrived at their solutions to problems that were important to them. But individuals did not act in a vacuum. The church went to some lengths to ensure that action of individual lay people did not involve the church. Of critical importance was this. Catholic action organisations as such were not to become directly involved in party politics. Any direct involvement in party political matters was strictly forbidden because it would involve the church. We were the agents of the bishops, we were mandated by the bishops, we could not become party political. However, action was not based solely on individuals. Organisations such as the YCW or the Rural Movement could speak on behalf of their members. They could make representation to government or local organisations on behalf of their members. But they had to be transparent. They spoke as an organisation in the democratic way. They were not secret organisations. Now I want to say something about Bob Santa Maria and his view of Catholic action. Bob rejected the official and orthodox view of Catholic action. And this is the central theme of my book. This rejection led to serious repercussions for both the Australian church and Australian politics. It also, in my view, led to the eventual failure of the rural movement, which became little more than an anti-communist front, despite the fact it was a mandated Catholic action movement answerable to the bishops. This rejection by Bob of official and orthodox Catholic action led to the inevitable split within the Australian Catholic bishops in the 1950s, the split in the ALP in 1955, and the formation of the DLP, which kept the Liberals in power and Labor out for 23 years. This rejection led to the involvement of Vatican officials to resolve the issues of Catholic action in Australia in 1957. That decision went against Santa Maria and endorsed the view of Catholic action which had been first defined by Pius XI in 1927. I make the point in the book that Santa Maria was out of step with church authorities. He had the support of some Australian bishops, especially Archbishop Mannix and other Victorian bishops, but he was out of step with the authorities in Rome. He set up his own hybrid version of Catholic action with, in my view, disastrous consequences. 
the 1957 Vatican decision, which went against Santa Maria, was later endorsed by Pope Paul VI at the close of the Second Vatican Council in 1965. Santa Maria's views on Catholic action were divisive and wrong, and in my view, was central to the failure of the National Catholic Rural Movement. So what did Santa, why did Santa Maria reject Catholic action? For one simple reason, he didn't think it worked. What was his view? He had an authoritarian view of Catholic action. He believed all action should be geared to political change, highly coordinated and disciplined. Nothing he believed could change if individuals were free to work out their own solutions. He believed in what he called, no sorry, what Kevin Kelly called a single force of Catholic laymen. Women, I'm sorry, were never taken seriously in the rural movement in the 50s and 60s. One woman wrote a cookery book and that was about as good as it got for women in 1961. Bob wanted and expected a highly disciplined group of what he called the best people, controlled and directed from the top. He believed in mobilising Catholics as a quasi-political force operating under him. The fact that Catholic action organisations were intimately linked to the church appeared not to worry him. For years he argued that his work in the labour movement fighting communism was Catholic action. When the Vatican said it wasn't, he turned his organisation into a civic body. For years he used the rural movement as an arm of his anti-communist political campaign despite its formal status as a movement of Catholic action. He was never interested in fine distinctions. His way of acting was to permeate political, economic and social organisations. Policies was what interested him. Policies had to change. Politicians had to be influenced. Allegiance of his members was not to the organisations they joined, but to him. People were expected in the rural movement to join farming organisations, but their allegiance was less about the organisation they joined, but to him and the policies that he wanted implemented in those organisations. He learnt this from the Communist Party. He never joined the political mainstream. He never joined a political party. He never tested his views in a democratic forum. He manipulated the action of Catholics from within his Catholic centre. Opposition was not tolerated. The rural movement was one year old when he was telling his members to move out if they were not to pre prepared to work outside church circles. He never accepted the idea of forming members, which was central to the whole idea of Catholic action. For Bob, the task always took precedence. Forming people, he believed, was slow and ineffective. There can be no question that this is what he thought. I found stacks of evidence to show that the importance is the issue at hand, not the training of people that they might develop and work themselves through their organisations. He was more interested in the results that would come from changing policies within organisations. And with his success in the labour movement, he tried to change the nature of the rural movement. So after La Verna in 1961, he tried to change the status of the rural movement from a Catholic action organisation into a civic organisation like the NCC. He wanted an organisation that could become directly involved in politics. 
In the early 60s, this is what he tried to do. He wanted a civic body without any direct links to the church controlled and organised by him.